Hello, I am the Community Assistant for SRS, here to share a video tutorial recorded by Mr. Bao. In this video, we will discuss how to use this camera to achieve a 24-7 live streaming. It can automatically stream to our YouTube or other platforms. Today, we utilized a cloud server. Why not use a local computer instead? Because using a computer often leads to interruptions in the live stream due to issues like system crashes or power outages. Using a cloud server provides a more stable streaming experience. Today we need a solution based on the SRS stack. Deploying it onto a cloud server will allow us to achieve this effect. First, we can purchase an affordable cloud server. For example, we can use AWS as a cloud server provider. We select a region. For example, if you want to stream to YouTube, any overseas region will work. Choose the region that provides faster speeds for your location. Next, we can choose an operating system. Choose the latest version of Ubuntu. Next, we need to consider the data traffic aspect. If you plan to stream for a longer duration, consider the data traffic limitations. Or if your video has a higher bit rate, or if you want to stream to multiple platforms simultaneously, choose a plan with higher data traffic allocation in this case. The specific method for calculating traffic is available on my website. I have a method on my website for calculating data traffic. After purchasing the server, you can proceed with the creation process. After the creation is complete, click to enter the server. First, we need to open the firewall. Next, you also need to set a static IP for the server, because the IP is currently dynamic. Let's first assign a static IP to make it a fixed IP address. Next, let's proceed to open the firewall. Open up all the rules for the firewall. Next, we can connect to this server. Now, let's proceed with installing the SRS stack. Log in using the server's IP address, followed by the username and either the login password or SSH key. We can use this tool to connect to the server. First, we need to switch to the root user. You can directly modify it according to this code. I also have this code on my website. It is quite straightforward. Next, follow these three steps. It is very simple. If you are using a different cloud server, it is possible that you are already using the root user directly. In that case, you don't need to follow the first step. After completing the first step, next, let's update the Aptus source for Ubuntu. Then proceed with installing Docker. Install Docker. After installing Docker, next let's proceed with installing the SRS stack. Then copy this IP address. Once it is installed successfully, you can copy this IP and open it. Access the SRS stack using IP and port 2022. First, let's change the password. Once the password has been changed, here we can see a feature called Virtual Live. Next, we need to configure the camera settings. We need an address for stream forwarding, which the SRS stack will pull from. Now let's go to the camera settings. I am connected to a remote camera. Each camera model is different. The streaming address for each camera model may be different. For this specific camera, in its configuration, let's go to the settings. It has a network setting. First, let's take a look at its network settings. For example, the IP address of this camera is 192.168.232. Please note that this IP address is a local network IP. Next, we need to convert this local network IP to a public IP address so that the IP address can be accessed from the external network. Next, we will use VLC to verify if the camera's stream can be played Download VLC Media Player. It can be used to test the smoothness of the stream. First, as an initial step, click on the File menu in VLC. Then, select the Open Network submenu. Here, we can enter the streaming address for the camera. Usually, the protocol used is RTSP. Then, enter the username and password for the RTSP stream. Replace the IP address with your own IP address. And specify the port, which is typically 554 for RTSP. 
Then, provide the name of the stream. This camera has two streams. We need the stream from the second camera. You can find this address on the camera's official website. First, we have the internal IP address 192.168.2.32. Use this internal IP address with port 554. Then click on play. Playing the internal IP address should work fine. However, we cannot access this address from the external network. Similarly, we cannot access this address from the cloud server. We need to convert this address to a public IP. How can we convert it? First, let's start with the first step. Access the router's admin page that the camera is connected to. Like this, it's a gateway provided by your internet service provider. Then, in this menu, find the advanced settings. Let me check the status of this router first. This is its public IPv4 address. We need to map the IP address of the camera to this public IP address. How can we do that mapping? Let's find the advanced section. Then there is a DMZ host option. In the DMZ hosting section, locate the DMZ option, then map the internal IP of this camera for external access. Click on Enable. You can choose either an IP or a device. For example, we can choose the IP address. Then select the IP address 192.168.232. That's the IP address of the camera. Map it to the external network after completing the mapping. Subsequently, we can access the camera using this public IP. Then, let's replace this public IP address. Open it locally and give it a try. First, copy the entire address. Try opening it on your computer to see if it works. Replace it with the public IP address, 208.168.226.71. This is the public IP address of the remote camera. Let's see if we can access it. Great, it looks like we have successfully connected. Due to the camera's distant location, there is a slow response in viewing the feed. Okay, now the feed from the camera is successfully accessed. Now, using this address, you can start streaming on the SRS stack. For example, you can enter this address here. I will change the RTSP address here to the public IP. Double check the address to make sure it's correct and not filled in incorrectly. Next, we need to select the platform where we want to stream. We need to find the URL of the platform where we want to stream. And we also need to find the stream key. For YouTube, it is very simple. We simply open YouTube. Then click on the Start Live Stream button. Then scroll down the page. Here you will find a live streaming stream key. Here you will also find a live streaming stream URL. Then we fill in this URL and key. And there is this streaming key. Perhaps different platforms have different streaming keys, but they all have similar terminology. Then in SRS stack, simply click on start to begin. Now let's check the status of virtual live. You can see the status below the page. It indicates that the streaming is in progress. Let's go back to our YouTube backend. Let's see if the live stream has started successfully. Okay, now let's check the status of the connection. SRS stack has started streaming gradually. Just wait for a moment and you will be able to see the stream. The camera's video feed has been successfully broadcasted using the public IP address. You can ignore the low bitrate warning for the stream. Another scenario is that your public IP address is dynamic in the event that your IP changes. It is no longer the IP 208.1168.226.71. Under what general circumstances would this change occur? This typically happens when your camera resets or if your camera experiences a power outage. Subsequently, its IP would change, or if your router experiences a power outage. This could potentially trigger a reconnection process. After re-establishing a connection, the internet service provider may allocate a new IP address. Under such circumstances, we would not be able to use this IP anymore, because even a public IP address can change. We would then be unable to use this specific IP. 
we need to set up a dynamic DDNS, dynamic domain name system. Change the value at this location to a domain name. How to apply for this? Let's refer to the camera's instructions for that. First, we need to open the camera. First, let's turn it off. Let's take a look at the modem router. This is the back end of the modem router, which acts as a gateway. Then we navigate to this page to find the DDNS settings. Here, under the dynamic DNS settings, we can configure the DDNS. Here, they only provide one option for DDNS. Let's click on it. I see that it seems to be a paid service or relatively expensive. They provide a free trial for seven days. If you choose to pay for it, the annual fee is 55. This is a bit expensive. Let's not use this plan for now, as it is too expensive. Let's explore the DDNS solution for the camera. The camera itself supports dynamic DDNS. We find the settings of the camera. Go inside and find the network settings. Retrieve the specific information about the network. Yes, this is the local IP address. Then we find the advanced settings of the camera. There is a DDNS option here. It is a dynamic DDNS option. And below that, there is a setting. And here, there are two options to choose from. And there is also a no IP option. No IP option is usually cheaper, and they offer a free plan as well. For the free plan, they require email confirmation every 30 days. We can directly search for no IP and use their service. This is the setup I previously configured. Let me show you how to set it up. Upon entering the website noep.com, each individual can set up one dynamic DDNS for free. We have located one here, and then create one in this location. I now need to upgrade in order to create more. With the free version, I can only manage one. You can create one for free, and then upgrade to five for 399s. If you choose the free option, you can create one DDNS for free. If you choose the paid option, you can create up to five DDNS entries for $3.99 per month. If you choose the paid option, the DDNS entries will not change. With the paid option, you don't need to confirm every month. If it's free, email confirmation is required once a month. This domain name is still in use. The unconfirmed ones have all expired. Once you have created it here, we take note of this domain name. This is my account. This is the login email. This is the username. This is the website where we just set up a dynamic DDNS. Once you have confirmed your username and password, you can access your account through this website. Then you can access the camera through this website. You can access it on your local computer. Let's test it. Let's replace the public IP with the dynamic domain name we just registered. The port remains the same at the end. Let's try playing the stream again. Great, it looks like the stream is playing successfully. Please note that this time we access the stream using the dynamic domain name. Now we can access the SRS backend using the following address. Let's replace the streaming address with the modified address we just configured. Let's change the streaming address to the fixed domain name address. Use the DDNS address instead of the current address. Submit the form after replacing the address with the DDNS address. Select an option here. You just need to enter the streaming address and the stream key. Then you can start live streaming from the cloud server. It will continue to stream without interruption. If you wish to pause it, you can click stop here. You can navigate to the live streaming interface on YouTube. Click on the end stream to terminate the live broadcast. Under normal circumstances, this does not require you to have your computer turned on. You don't need to worry about the IP address changing. You don't need to worry about power outages or interruptions. Indeed, cloud live streaming is very convenient. This concludes the tutorial on how to use a camera for continuous 24-7 live streaming. If there is anything unclear, you can leave a comment below the video. Thank you for watching everyone. See you in the next video.